Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at secondary constructors in Kotlin. So I've created a new project here, and let's start by going to new Kotlin class file, and I'll create a class called person, and let's just hit return, and there we go. And just for convenience, I'll just put the main method here. So fun main, there we go. Now we'll give person a property. So I'll say here, val name string, and I do this in practically every video, but it's gonna get slightly different shortly. So of course we can create a person, let's say val person one equals person bob, and that should all work. Now in this case, it's pretty easy to add a name property because name is what you could call a scalar variable. It's just a single value. But what happens if you have some kind of data stored in this person that's some kind of compound type, like an array that consists of multiple values? For example, let's create here a list. So I'll say val awards equals mutable list of, and let's say that in this mutable list, we're going to store strings, which are gonna represent the awards that Bob has been given. So we need to put string there. And the question is, how would we initialize this from the constructor? Well, we could consider passing in a list, but maybe what we'd ideally like to do is something like this. We'd like to say val person two equals person, let's have Claire here. And let's say that Claire has won the Nobel Prize and also the Fields Medal. So I'm getting red underlining here because I haven't specified that I can pass these in the primary constructor here. And we've seen that you can use the var or keyword to handle this kind of a situation where you've got an unknown number of items that you want to pass to some kind of function. But even if I'm allowed to type var org here, what would I do with the value that was passed in? Because I can't put code in this primary constructor. Maybe I could try to use an init block. However, we don't have to do any of that because there is a thing called a secondary constructor that is designed, at least in part, with exactly this kind of situation in mind. So down here, let's write the keyword constructor. And when we call this constructor, we're not gonna call this constructor. So when we create the object, you're only going to call one constructor. In this case, we'll be calling this constructor, but in this case, we want to call this new constructor that we're adding here. So let's have name of type string. That's one thing that we want to pass to this new constructor that we're adding. And notice we can't and don't use the val or var keyword here. And then the second argument that we want is a var arg list of strings, which I'll call awards. So let's say that's type string. And we need curly brackets here as well. And the reason I've still got this red underlining is that we need to do something with this name and the proper thing to do with it is to invoke the primary constructor from this secondary constructor. And the way I can do that is by putting a colon right here before we start this code block. Let's maybe put a space in and there I can use the this keyword to call the primary constructor and pass it the name. So this is a use of this that we haven't seen yet. Now we've got a place here between these curly brackets in this code block where we can actually initialize this awards list using these varag arguments. Now I've got two variables called awards here because I decided to call that awards. That's also called awards. To differentiate between them, I can say this.awards if I want to refer to this. If I don't put this in front of it, we are going to be referring to the local variable the one that's closer by, by default. And I can call a method of this mutable list called add all. And then I can pass in my varog array here. Let's pass in awards. So this is going to be referring to this because there's no this keyword in front of it. And finally, I've got something that ought to work. So we're not gonna see anything really interesting if we run it, but let's try running it just to make sure it does actually run. And you can see it does run. We have no error down here. Now, I think what would be interesting would be if we would add a method that can display all the information about a person. So let's try to do that. Let's have a method down here, fun. Let's call this display info maybe. And notice because this is two words, although I begin functions with a lowercase first letter, I begin subsequent words in the function with 
uppercase first letters. This is called camel case. It's really important to pay attention to case, even when it's not enforced by the syntax. So let's print the name of the person. Let's do print line name. And underneath that, let's have maybe print line. Let's just have a few dashes. And then what if there are no awards? So let's say if awards, and I can check if this is empty by using the is empty method. So if the awards list is empty, I'm going to print line no awards else. Now I want to loop through the awards and print them out. So let's say for award in awards, and I'll just do print line award. Okay, that's quite a lot of stuff. Let's take a look at it. So that's everything we've got at the moment. And I need to call this method, of course, for it to be any use. So I'm going to go down here maybe, and let's call person one dot display info. And I'll just duplicate that line and change this second one to person two. So let's run it and see if it works. So now we get Bob and some underlining, no awards. And then it actually would be nicer if I put a print line here because that will create a blank line in my output. Let's just try that again. Okay, that's better. So I get Bob, no awards and Claire, she's got the Nobel Prize and Fields Medal somehow. So this is quite a lot of code if you're a beginner, but I wanted to show you a realistic use case of secondary constructors. You can actually have as many secondary constructors as you like in your class, but there's only going to be one primary constructor. And the secondary constructors should normally reference the primary constructor to do any kind of initialization that the primary constructor does. If you're a complete beginner and you're feeling a bit intimidated by this, what I would say is try to type it out yourself. Try to type it out bit by bit and test it as you go along, as I've just done. So create an object and check that that works, maybe with a name property, add some kind of list here, run that and check that works. Try adding a secondary constructor. You're probably going to forget things like the colon or whatever, but go back and put them in. And finally, try to write this method yourself. When I'm trying to understand new code, I often just type it out and get it working. If it's feasible to do that, if it's a relatively small amount of code as this is, and then afterwards I find it's much easier to understand it rather than trying to do it the other way around, trying to understand it and then typing it after that. Somehow the typing of it greatly facilitates the understanding I find. Okay, so that's it for this video and until next time, happy coding.